seems to be leading like a, a heavy offensive pie. So there should be some viable weapons behind him. You hinted at a few of them earlier. Do you get a sense that any of them are developing into like that clear go-to number two behind Stefan Diggs? Not really. I think Beasley is always the one I kind of I I kind of veer towards just because Allen looks for him constantly, especially against zone defense. Like Beasley just has this innate ability to understand where the defender is supposed to be and to use it against that player. Um, and so that's one of his strongest assets. And in man coverage, you know, the way he sets up his routes right right from the line of scrimmage is pretty fun to watch. And he's, yeah. you know, they're, the Bills nickel cornerback, Taron Johnson, said basically having Cole Beasley there is like a cheat code for him because he can learn uh, how to defend basically anybody in the NFL at that point. Wow. So I think with uh, with Beasley, he's always someone to look out for. But again, it's it comes to the, the snap percentage for me about whether or not he's actually going to be this bona fide number two um, because if he's playing low 60s like he did last year there's not a ton of opportunity on, unless Allen just targets him like crazy Sanders is someone I think that could probably crack into like the 78 to 80 85 percent snaps as long as he's healthy um, Gabriel Davis is someone who had I think a little over 60 percent of snaps last year because he stepped in for John Brown so even if Davis goes up and Sanders you know, 85 comes down to like 75% or so. I still think there's a lot of meat on the bone there for Sanders to be a, a viable, like late round guy for someone just to wanting a piece of the Bills offense if, if they didn't get one early on. Yeah, absolutely. I think he falls uh, most drafts past those other names you mentioned there. And it, as it is, it is the new weapon there. Has he looked like him and, and Josh Allen have forged that rapport? Has it looked like he, that veteran status has helped him? Or what are your thoughts on Sanders so far in, in OTAs and now obviously training camp? Yeah, they've definitely established uh, a bit. Like like I said before, Allen has been looking for him when, when Sanders has been on the field to try and build that chemistry with him. It was especially evident early on in camp. Um, when he, you know, there was one play where Allen just threw threw a ball up. He saw something in the line of scrimmage, just threw it up to Sanders, who was in one on one coverage, and it was just a perfectly placed ball. And Sanders completely beat his defender. I think it was Levi Wallace on the play, and wow. uh, came, came down with it. So it, there is that sort of link right there. And also, Sanders can still play. He's a good route runner, um, and he his route profile from this past year really meshes well with what Josh Allen likes to throw. A lot of the slant patterns, a, a, a lot of the digs, a lot of the outs. He, he, he goes down the field uh, quite a, a good portion of time, and or at least he did for the Saints last year. I think it was around like 27, 28% of his routes were go routes. Um, so that can supplant the John Brown void that, that they uh, left when, when they cut him this past offseason. So, so yeah, I think there's – there's some opportunity for Sanders. I do think they they still like Gabriel Davis, and Davis has looked good this summer. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I think they signed Sanders because they were after him a couple of different times. They tried to trade for him at the deadline a couple of years ago. They tried to sign him, and that didn't work. And finally, they got him to, to sign after he um, was released by the Saints. So I think they want to incorporate him pretty heavily. I can't wait to see how that fit is. I've always been a big Sanders fan, even if he's getting up there in age. I bet, I bet he has at least a couple left. Uh, you mentioned, though, another one that a lot of fantasy owners were very excited about till these the Sanders developments. That's Gabriel Davis. Uh, and I know you said there's a ton of meat on the bone in this offense for a, a bunch of healthy numbers. It's a matter of how many can, how many mouths can this big aerial pie feed. You know, he was the most air yards other than Stefan Diggs on the team. At 957 last year. And so a lot of people thought that means he's automatically going to inherit that John Brown role. You mentioned Sanders might be more so that fit so far, uh, but this guy still played about 60, 70% of the snaps, as you mentioned too. So where do we find that balance? What do we, what do you expect out of Gabriel Davis in his sophomore season? I would expect him to maybe have a little bit of a, a bigger role when all receivers are healthy, but, um, but be mostly that fourth receiver. I think that's how it's pretty well been established to this point um, th through training camp. Uh, usually there's there's a lot of Sanders uh, mixing in with, with Josh Allen. Davis will do it occasionally. But, uh, but yeah, I think for the most part, I, I would expect my personal expectation is that he's going to be the fourth receiver. Um, you mentioned the air yards thing. I think a lot of that has to do with his route profile. And Gabriel Davis, I think, ran a go route over, I think, 31 or 32 percent of his routes oh, yeah. last year. So that that's a it's a huge percentage of what, what they're trying to do. I do like Gabriel Davis a lot when plays break down. Um, I think he's 
one of the better players on the team at relocating and um, angling himself to to really bring on a uh, bring on the, the vision from Josh Allen and to get to a spot where he knows Allen would be conducive enough to throw. Um, so that part of his game works, especially because Allen plays out of structure quite a bit uh, when yeah. things break down in front of him. And not to mention the Bills offensive line, like the interior right now, struggling a little bit, think it could be a minor issue. Uh, and so if he has to break out of the pocket, maybe that lends itself to uh, Davis getting some more work down the field. So uh, but yeah, the, the percentages I think would be pretty similar to last year, as long as Sanders and Diggs are healthy, of course. Very intriguing. So now it all comes push to shove. You gave us a good breakdown on all three of those weapons, Beasley, Sanders, and Davis, the guys behind Diggs. You're drafting, you're on the clock here as a fantasy owner. How would you rank those guys in terms of your order of picks? Oh, the Bills players? All yeah, well, we know we know Diggs, we know Allen, those are good, but just those number two receivers or whoever those guys are, the complimentary pieces, the Beasleys, the Sanders, the Davises, how would you order those guys in a draft? I would probably, if if it were me, and I play fantasy too, so I get it. Um, yeah. if, if it were me, I'm probably staying away from Beasley, just where his cost is right now. Um, and then Sanders, I think, is intriguing because I think there's upside from, from where he's getting drafted. Uh, yeah. Davis... I, I'm I'm more in dynasty camp for Davis than I am for for redraft just right now. And unless something happens with the foot injury, if that lingers on with Sanders and then the knee injury for for Diggs, I mean they run four receiver sets so often, or at least comparatively to the rest of the league, that it could be worth it. But uh, if if you're asking for like redraft, I would probably uh, favor Sanders over Davis. Well, let's also go to that last maybe potential passing game weapon in Dawson Knox. Really, he's never been the most consistent guy, but again, this is such a prolific offense. He's got that size, 6'4", 254, can move with it. You'd think there could be at least some touchdown upside or something with this guy. We haven't seen it quite yet. Do you think he's worth the late-round stab, or is, this, is there any other competition I might not be seeing at tight end? What are your thoughts on that position with this Bills offense? Yeah, I actually uh, wrote about this for uh, my practice observations today. It'll post in a couple hours here uh, over at The Athletic, and – his main competition this summer has been Jake Hollister, who was formerly with the Seahawks and yep. notably to Josh Allen. He was a teammate of Josh Allen's at Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, but Hollister went from being a somewhat intriguing spring player, kind of flash some athleticism, even more so than maybe what Dawson Knox had. But an early back injury in, in training camp like uh, put him on the shelf for a good six days. And once he came back, the pads were on. Hollister really hasn't... Um, shown out at all and to me Knox even though he's had a few hiccups this camp I mean the big thing with him is concentration drops um he'll miss some easy ones but he'll make ridiculous ones and that's that's kind of like the thing that makes Bills fans want to pull their hair out from time to time um but there is some potential there and it doesn't seem like he will uh, he will be anything but the starting tight end at this point. It, it doesn't seem like Hollister is putting together a good enough camp to push him. So Knox is going to have every opportunity to prove to the Bills that he can be their long-term tight end. It's a big year. It's his third season. Uh, they know he has really good uh, yards after the catch ability. They know he's improving as a blocker. If he can just get rid of those drops out of his game, become more consistent, then, then there could be something there. But the thing is... Josh Allen kind of looks for his receivers above all else. And um, mm. I don't know that the tight end is necessarily going to be a prolific one in this offense, unless you have enough of a talent like, you know, a Kelsey Waller, Kittle, something like that, to where they, they become a go-to. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.